Arctix Freezer 34 eSports CPU cooler. Yes, that is a weird name, but can it live up to its name of Freezer? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. Sorry about that weird intro, but I couldn't help myself. I needed to get at least one Dragon Ball Z abridged joke or reference thing in this video, especially since I have a cooler named Freezer. With that hopefully out of my system, I'm going to start off as I normally do with a quick overview of the CPU cooler. There are two variants of the Freezer 34 eSports. The Freezer 34 eSports, which comes with one P120 Bionics fan, has an MSRP of 45 US dollars, and there are six colors to choose from. There's also the Freezer 34 eSports Duo, which comes with two P120 Bionics fans in a push-pull setup. There is also six color options to choose from, but for some reason, the white gray version has an MSRP of 60 US dollars, while the rest have an MSRP of only 53 US dollars. Now, I was sent the Freezer 34 eSports, so yes, to have full disclosure, Arctic did send me over this cooler so that I could take a look at it and review it. They also sent me over some additional Bionics fans, so I will be testing this cooler in a push-pull configuration to simulate the eSports Duo. But as always, all the opinions expressed in this video are mine. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's see what comes in the box. There is a QR code to the manual, so there is no actual paper copy of the manual in the box, which is kind of cool to see. Now taking everything out of the box, there is another box along with the heatsink and fan. This box likely has all the mounting hardware in it. And yes, yes it does. There is a backplate for Intel mainstream sockets, some extra fan clips, a small tube of MX4 thermal compound, the mounting bars, there's only one set of mounting bars, so installation should be pretty straightforward. And finally, there are a whole bunch of standoffs. Moving on to the heatsink and fan. The P120 Bionics fan is a PWM PST fan, so it does come with the built-in splitter. Now the clips holding the fan in are surprisingly tight. Now the length of the fan cable is short. I guess this is to maybe help with cable management. Looking at the heatsink, the white looks well coated. I don't see any missing spots. There are four continuous heat pipes. The heat pipes are direct contact, which is nice to see. And yes, the heat pipes are six millimeters. I'll actually show some B-roll of the heatsink so you can have a better look. The dimension of the cooler with the one fan attached is 157 millimeters high by 124 millimeters wide by 75 millimeters deep. Now based off of these dimensions, I don't think there should be any RAM clearance issues for micro ATX and ATX builds. Okay, the Freezer 34 eSports is compatible with most Intel sockets out of the box. Arctic will also provide mounting hardware for free with proof of purchase of a LGA 1700 socket CPU. Now for AMD compatibility, is compatible with AM4. Now for how to actually install the CPU cooler, I'll be doing this demonstration on an AM4 motherboard. Now as always, before you start, make sure to have a flat and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can use the box that the motherboard came in. You will also need a Phillips II screwdriver. Now the installation between Intel and AMD should be pretty similar. The differences being which standoffs you use and which holes those standoffs go through on the mounting bars. For AM4, you will need the backplate that your motherboard came with. And for mainstream Intel sockets, you will need to use the included backplate. So with the motherboard lying flat, I'm first going to remove the stock mounting hardware. Now you need to screw in the correct standoffs for your CPU socket. Once all the standoffs are screwed in, we can move on to fastening the mounting bars to the top of the cold plate, making sure to remove the fan. Which way the mounting bars face does depend on the socket of your CPU. For AM4, the bent parts should be facing outwards, but for Intel, I believe it should be flipped. Once the mounting bars are fastened to the cold plate, 
clean off your CPU with some isopropylene alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS, then making sure to remove the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate, placing the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the standoff threads with the holes in the mounting bar, tightening the heatsink down using the four thumb nuts. I found it easiest to make sure that all four thumb nuts were threaded onto the standoffs before tightening the thumb nuts all that much. You can now reinstall the fan onto the heatsink and plug the PWM connector into the CPU header on your motherboard. And we're done the installation. Now, before I move on to the temperature testing, I wanted to go over the fan's PWM range quickly. So with the fan at 100% PWM, the RPM of the fan was at 2125 and had a DBA of 35. Then I dropped the PWM speed all the way down and it had an RPM of 230 with a DBA of 32, which is also the noise floor of my room. Now onto the temperature testing, but before I go over the results, if you haven't watched my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll link a card above and I'll also have it linked in the description. So the Freezer 34 Esports, in the 35 dba noise equalized 87 watt test again the p120 bionics fan that came with the freezer 34 esports was able to run at full speed in this test just wanting to clarify that and it had a temperature of 73.8 the esports duo just edged that out with a temperature of 73 which both performed better than the Twin Tower Fantex cooler and the Hyper 212 Evo. When letting the fans run at full speed, the Freezer 34 Esports is the same since it was already at full speed at 73.8, with the Duo now at 72.5. So even at full speed, the additional fan only lowered the CPU temperature by 1.3C. Now the Duo is only at 37.5 dBA, which isn't much louder than the 35 dBA of the single fan, but at 87 watts, having the two fans isn't doing really all too much for the temperature. For the 150 watt testing, the Freezer 34 Esports performed much better than I thought it would. In the noise equalized test, it had a temperature of 83.4 C and the Duo had a temperature of 82.6. So when comparing that to the Hyper 212 Evo, which failed the test, the Arctic Cooler's doing pretty okay. Now at full speed, the Duo had a temperature of 82.1 C. So again, there isn't really all that much of a temperature difference between the single fan and the two fans. So what do I think of Arctic's Freezer 34 Esports? First off, it's a horrible name. I'm sorry, but it is. But it performed pretty well in both the 87 watt and 150 watt testing. The P120 Bionics fan is quiet, while still doing what it needs to do. The build quality and design of the heatsink seems pretty good. Everything feels solid. Installing the CPU cooler was really easy. It's definitely a plus not having to fight with some weird brackets. I personally would be comfortable pairing this with anything up to an R7 or an i7, and doing so likely would give you some overclocking headroom as well. But I think a 5900X or Intel's equivalent, whatever that might be, would be too much for this cooler if you were to have a heavier CPU workload. Now on the AM4 socket, the cold plate doesn't cover the whole IHS, which does seem a bit odd. It didn't seem to affect the cooling performance of the cooler, at least in my testing. It's just not very common to see something quite like this. Okay, to wrap everything up here, the Arctic Freezer 34 Esports has a really weird name but it is actually a pretty good CPU cooler. It really comes down to what CPU you're planning to use with it and how much you can actually buy it for. I would recommend staying to eight cores or lower. Now I do feel that the MSRP is just a little high, but at time of filming, both amazon.com and amazon.uk have these coolers for much lower than MSRP. So if you are looking for a new CPU cooler, you might want to check that out. And that's all I got for this one. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Please follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT. I also have a Discord server. The link is in the description below and it is completely free to join. You can also maybe check out the videos I got right here. They should be pretty much along the same lines of what you just watched. And as always, thank you for watching. 
and see you next time.